I don't even think you can see me over that fly. Better. Today we're going over UV resins. So these tying tips videos are going really well. I'm having fun. You guys are commenting a lot and liking the videos a lot. Uh, who would have known? VitaVu. A small gift from the staff at VitaVu. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Do not open till December 25th. Okay, VitaVu. I won't. So unless you've been under a rock for the last, I don't know, 10 years maybe, UV resins have literally changed the way that most people tie flies. Like when the Copper John came out, I remember sitting down and tying like two dozen Copper Johns and then mixing my epoxy, my five minute epoxy, putting it on there and, and getting it just right. and awesome you know it was great it was this it was a process but it was a process you know you you had to you had to mix your epoxy you had to and then you you just got lucky if you used all those flies before the epoxy yellowed out and just uh, just it was just a pain when UV resin came out it totally changed all of that it just made everything so much easier so much more efficient I haven't touched epoxy since Shutting this stupid thing off. So, you know, everything that I'm getting ready to say is a totally biased opinion. So take it for what it's worth. It's not, I'm not really reviewing this because I work with Loon. Uh, I've worked with Loon for a while. Um, love their products. There's reasons why I like their products more than other products, but I'm not going to go over that today. This is literally just a an overview of what you can use UV products for so first viscosities I think is I think it's the right word uh, there's there's thick there's thin uh, they've got flow which is I've got too many to go through it's, it's thinner than those two I use the thin more than I use anything I, I think I probably use thin 75 80% of the time I'll use thick to kind of fill big gaps and stuff like that but thin is is my favorite by far now in the last couple years the colors have come into the mix so I mean you've got like hot green yellow brown blue hot orange white olive hot purple hot red smoke this is a really cool one hot pink orange you get it there's they've got they got loads of colors and they're laying all over the place so so now that we've kind of made a mess I'm gonna run through some uses for these things one of the first tying tips videos I did uh, to start this this new style of tying tips video was on like sealing and setting eyes on streamer I, I will always use super glue to set them and, and hold them in place until I can get my UV resin around them and sealed and get everything sealed in. Um, this stuff has saved hundreds of eyes. So basically you just kind of seal everything in. You put your UV resin on top. You put your UV resin on bottom. And then you run your UV resin all the way around them on the outside covering the eyes and covering, just making sure that UV resin is all the way around. And just in case you were wondering, these eyes are from Dead Meat Customs. Look at the shape on those eyes. It's so cool. So not only can you seal streamer eyes on just big streamers, but you can also seal eyes on like double barrel popper head. They have this recessed place that fits an eye perfectly. Then you can fill that up 
with your UV resin, hit it with the torch, and you have a sealed eye. You'll never lose that eye. The same thing applies to fish skulls. They have a recessed place that fit their eyes perfectly, but if you don't seal it, those eyes will eventually pop off. So I will literally cover the head, the recessed spot, the eye with UV resin, and that you just don't lose the eyes. So spending 30 seconds on sealing a fish skull or a double barrel popper head or a eyes on your streamer is going to save your eyes totally. Well, I mean, not totally because you can still lose one every once in a while. You get the point. Save so much. So one of the streams that I guide on is a freestone stream in southern Missouri. Very very southern Missouri. And we have stoneflies that are the size of your thumb. So obviously we use stonefly nymphs like you wouldn't believe. So I tie this wiggle stone with UV chewy skin over the back and the UV chewy skin will get chewed up. It's no pun intended. But you can put some UV thin over the chewy skin and it's immediately bulletproof. So in addition to the stonefly back, without a doubt, I will be putting the UV resin on the like the shell of a scud. Adding UV resin to the shell of the scud just basically makes this, uh, I, can't, I hate to keep saying this, but it makes it bulletproof. Makes this to where it's gonna sink a little bit faster, it gives it good a little bit of extra weight. And with the new colors, you can add a hot spot inside of the shell. So it gives this depth and very, very cool. So one of the cooler uses for UV resin that I've seen lately is instead of dubbing a ball behind the wing on a soft tackle, just to put a, a round ball of UV resin behind the wing on the soft tackle, tie your wing on your soft tackle. And if you use one of the colors, it just makes total sense. Okay, so I know I'm gonna get, but Brian, what about the tack? And I hate how tacky the stuff is. The the tack, in all seriousness, the tack has never been an issue to me. I don't care about the tack, it doesn't bother me. Fly Fish Food did a great UV resin shootout uh, several, a few years ago. They talked about the tack, the smell. The smell's a lot bigger of an issue for me than it is some people, I hate that heavy, hard, chemically smell that comes from some of them, which is one of the main reasons I like the Loon. I, I said I wasn't going to do a review, but I, I don't like the really hard smell. That I don't think there's no way that can be good for you. So that's a bigger issue for me, but uh, the tack, the tack is what it is. I'll link Fly Fish Foods shootout in the in the description below, but in a roundabout way, if you don't have any tack at all, what you have is a very brittle product that's going to break. It can break. Okay, that's, I mean, that's, that's a pretty quickly summed up rundown of that shootout that they did, but they did a really, really good job on that shootout. So one of my main things is, it, you know, if you don't like the tack, you can use Sally Hansen's, you can, you can use some Sally Hansen fingernail polish stuff. On, the, on it, you can rub some alcohol on it. But what I started doing, Germex. Okay. A little bit of Germex, rub it, all, rub it on the eyes, and it's gone. It takes longer to get the Germex off your hands than it does to get the tack off the eyes. And your hands are sanitized. I'm just looking out for you. <laughs> so that about covers everything on this video that I'm going to cover, I know there are a ton more uses. So if you use UV resin in a different way, comment below. I'd like to hear the way everybody uses their UV products because there may be something that I haven't thought of yet. I'm sure there's something I haven't thought of because I totally want to steal your idea. <laughs>
Also, if there are more tips or anything else that you'd like to see me cover, put them in the comment section as well. I'm going to try to get to as many of these as I possibly can, try to cover a ton of different tips and techniques and whatever. 